Hello to everyone, my name is Juan Sebastián Ortiz and today we're going to talk about the labor market. We can take this information from the chapter 18.3 in the José de Gregorio's book. Uh, we specifically, we are going to talk about the first part of the labor market, which is the labor demand. Um, so the index is going to be where it was born. So the production factors, production function, marginal product of labor, real salary, and finally to get the labor demand. That's what we are going to check today. Okay. So um, the production um, function is in base of the production factors, which are um, the capital, the labor, and the technology. As we are going to assume that the technology or the variation of the technology is going to be zero, we're just going to have two more assumptions. The first one is going to be the long-term and the short-term um, production. The long-term is going to have the capital um, variable and the short-term is going to have the capital constant. Why is this? Because in the macroeconomics, we are going to um, check what happens in the short-term in the uh, conjunctural um, time uh, so we are going to check what happens when the capital is uh, is constant and now I'm going to explain in a graphic which is the next one the production function graphic uh, why is this important basically if we take the capital as a constant we just can move um, inside the curve and uh, check what happens if the labor increase we are going to check that the um, the curve has a, a diminishing returns of uh, a scale and that means that as soon as the labor increase the production is going to increase in a less way for example in this point then in this point then in this point and then less and less and less so the um, businessman and the producers are going to offer more job but they are going to get less returns in production why is that because the capital is going to be constant and what does it mean is that uh, for example if i have a bakery and i have an oven and i have two employees they could maybe start uh, working well but then uh, if I start um, hiring like five or ten people in the same place they're going to start say, serving one to others and um, the production is going to decrease and my costs are going to increase the same way if we check this uh, axis and we change for the variation of the Q and the variation of the L which is um, variation of the Q is the variation of the L we get the um, pending of the production function if we change the axis the vertical axis with the pending of the production function we get this curve which is more similar of what is going to be the labor demand so it's a um, decreased curve and what we are checking here is that as soon as the pending decrease it means an, an increase in the labor that demands the producer. The next slide we are going to check the step by step from where we get the um, real salary. Um, so if we... Do you have a If we take the benefits um, function, which is the total income less the total cost, which is the product of the quantity less the product on the quantity of the labor, um, we just are going to change the variation of both and we take uh, the variation of Q and the variation of L to one side of the equation and then to other side of the equation um, we are going to leave the salary, the nominal salary, and the price. Um, when we have the W is going to be the nominal salary, and we and we uh, divide it in the price, 
is going to be the real salary. We are deflecting the salary. So we have the real salary here and remember that we have the pending of the production function that also is going to be called the um, marginal labor of production. So in that order of ideas we have that the marginal labor of production is going to be equal to the real salary. The same way if we just change this one because before we have Q, the bar A, Q and then we have um, M which is the variation of Q and the variation of L and then we replace for the salary which is going to be the real salary we get this curve which is decreasing and is in this one is the labor demand what is this saying to me and why this is important because it says that as soon as as soon as the price is gonna increase the real salary is gonna decrease it means that when there is inflation or when the prices in an economy increase the real salary of the workers is going to decrease. The same way when the prices um, decrease, the real salary is going to increase. So why is this important? Because um, the producers, um, they want to pay less in, in, in costs, so that means that they want to have less cost as workers. So in salary, they want to have less cost. And as soon as they get more price, it means that they, they are going to get more benefits. So they get more benefits and they get less cost, they are going to hire more people. That's why as soon as they decrease, they are going to hire more and more people. And the L is going to uh, come to, to my side, which is the right side. And the opposite is also true. When the price goes down, the level of, of real salary goes up and when the real salary goes too up, it's impossible for the producers to pay the salary of the same amount of people. So they, what they need to do is to fire some people to get the same benefits as uh, they were before. Um, so yeah, that's basically the labor demand and thank you very much.